construction of the refectories in the monasteries was summoned by the studi chartist demands for monks feeding jointly. In 1108, not far from this refectory, the monastery refectory was built. According to the chronicle, it was damaged during the earthquake in 1230 and was under ruins till 17th century. New brick refectory was built in 1684-1694 with funds provided by Kievan bourgeois Michael Maximovich. After conflagration on the monastery territory in 1718, the damaged refectory was reconstructed and renovated in the Ukrainian Baroque style. In 1862, the first floor was built for novices to live in as they worked in the brotherly kitchen. In July 1893, Ecclesiastical Council decided to demolish the building of Old Refectory, as the dining room was very small for the Brethren community. The project of a new refectory was worked up by the architect Nikolaev. The construction of the refectory and refectory church, that resembled the ancient temples in Byzantium, was completed in 1895. It is a two-storied octagon building with a large spherical cupola, a diameter of it is about 20 meters, and arched windows. The chancel apse is located in the east part of the church. The facades of the church are decorated with complicated patterns of bricks. The foundation is laid and decorated with rustic stones and walls are decorated with arched windows. In order to decorate refectory and church, ornamental relief coated with polychrome painting was used. Frieze is decorated with stucco molding rosettes. The floor is laid with metal slabs, but on the solia there are marble ones. A new refectory church was consecrated in honor of Saints Antony and Theodosius on 13th of August 1895. In 1903, according to the order of the Ecclesiastical Council of the Lavra, the famous Russian architect Shusev composed a design for wall paintings. An art decoration of the interior was accomplished only in 1903 by the order of the Lavra Ecclesiastical Council. A famous Russian architect Shusev made the design for paintings and iconostasis icon stands, soul panels, and he personally was in charge of ornamental works. Monumental paintings in the church, which was named in honor of the founders of the monastery Saints Antony and Theodosius, were fulfilled by artists Popo, Lakov, and Yizhakevich. The artists dedicated all the murals to the Most Holy Mother of God of Pechersk, depicted Saints Antony and Theodosius, nest of the chronicler. Murals consisted of seven complicated compositions. The paintings of the central cupola, the presentation of Panagia and 56 prophets were fulfilled by Yizhakevich. Popov painted in the chancel the compositions on the north and south walls of the church and in the refectory, the miracle fishing, Christ in a moss. The artist Lakov decorated the walls with ornamental paintings. They began paintings from the top of the cupola. Jesus Christ is on the king's throne in a bishop vestment. The book of the gospel is in the left hand. He is blessing with his right hand. Cherubs are surrounding Jesus Christ, as well as the symbols of the saint evangelists and the most holy mother of God and John the Baptist. The circle is surrounded by seven archangels – Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Selephiel, Jagadiel, Uriel, Barakiel. At the bottom of the cupola, 32 windows are located. Along the belt, in the gilt medallions, forefathers and prophets are depicted. At the bottom of the drum, there are rib vaults with eight seraphims. The rib vaults symbolize the unity of heaven and the earth. The saint evangelists are depicted at the background of mountains and the sea landscapes. The saint evangelists are represented with the opened rolls in their hands. 
besides each of the saint evangelists, there is his symbol – Matthew, an angel, Mark, the lion, Luke, the bull, John, the eagle. On the four apses, the scenes from the life of Jesus Christ are depicted. On the left side of the chancel, there is the composition of the Nativity of Jesus. Bethlehem star is sparkling in the sky and on the earth. The infant Jesus was born, the Savior of humanity. Thousand and thousand angels are there in the sky. The Holy Mother of God, Mary and Joseph are leaning over the infant. Their faces are shining with joy and tenderness. On the northwest niche of the church, there is a scene, the meeting of the infant Christ in the temple. This holiday in the Orthodox Church is called Meeting because the infant Jesus saw Simeon. Long ago, God told Simeon that he would see the Savior. Mary and Joseph have come to God's house with the infant Jesus. Anne has come to see the infant Christ, too. God told her that he is the Savior. Simeon took the infant Jesus in his hands, blessed him and called him the Savior of all people. Beside Simeon, Anna was standing, and later on she told everybody in Jerusalem about the Savior. In this composition, some Matis are depicted – Eugen, Philaret, Arseni the Great, Isidore. On the southwest niche, there is a composition – the Baptism. Jesus is standing in the water of the river Jordan, and John is baptizing Jesus. At this moment, the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove. It's not a dove. It's God's Spirit coming down from heaven. This holiday has another name – Epiphany, Twelfth Day. One of the main miracles was resurrection from the tomb. Jesus Christ is resurrected from the tomb in a white shroud. Jesus Christ is standing praying, two angels are before him. Resurrection of Jesus Christ is the Easter day, the main holiday of the Orthodox Church. On this holiday we say, Christ is risen. It sounds three times in honor of the Holy Trinity. Every person has a cheerful heart, every soul is revived, the spring has come. The south wall is decorated with a composition Jesus feeds 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. It's one of the miracles created by Jesus Christ. It's written in the book of the Gospel that one day Jesus Christ went with his disciples on the other shore of the Sea of Galilee. Many people followed them because they saw miracles. Christ created healing the sick. He began teaching them many things. By the time, it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him and asked to send the people away, so they could go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. A boy has come, who brought five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus thanked God for that food and began breaking it into pieces. Before long, he has broken enough to feed all those 5,000 people. They all ate and were satisfied. The disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. So Savior gave heavenly bread as God gave heavenly men in desert. On the north wall, there is a composition – Jesus teaching on prayer. No one bread is in the man's life but every God's word which comes out of God. During the sermon, Jesus' teaching was expounded in all four books of the Gospel. On the slope of the mountain, covered with green grass, the Savior is standing, teaching the people about the New Testament's law of love. Jesus is surrounded by people, and everybody tries to come closely to him and even touch his clothes in order to get heavenly strength. Nobody leaves the Savior inconsolable. The New Testament law of Christ is the law of God's love from heaven, which gives people a strength to accomplish God's law. Christ proclaimed teaching about God's providence. Do not condemn anybody, strength of praying, giving alms. 
During the Sermon on the Mountain, the Savior gave nine divinity commandments, and that one who lives according to these commandments will be blessed. An altar apse, in which the image of the Mother of God is placed, is located in the eastern part of the church. The most honorable place, near the throne of the Heavenly Queen, is occupied by two angels and Reverend Antony and Theodosius. The iconography spread it in Ukrainian art from the beginning of the 17th century. It was the time when Kyiv little by little returned itself back its role of a center of national and cultural life. Icons of Mother of God of Pechersk, the Lavra Saints, became an artistic symbols of Kyiv. In the upper place there is a composition of the Last Supper. The Last Supper of Jesus took place the day before his Passions. Exactly on it Jesus introduced an Eucharist, the mystery of metamorphosis of bread and wine into the body and blood. Eucharist is translated from Greek as thanks. This mystery has always served and still is serving today as a recollection of a sin offering sacrificed by Jesus for the sins of humanity. In the vault over the altar there is a composition Christ the Pentecrator in the surrounding of seraphs. They are the closest to God. The six-winged seraphs burn with love to God and set fire to the hearts of others. They clean the soul with divine fire, they fill it up with force, strength and inspire the preaching. On the southern wall the composition The Crucifixion of Christ is placed. After an execution Christ was left by all his disciples, just as he prophesied before. Only John, his beloved disciple, whom he asked to take care of his mother and the women who served to Jesus remained with him till the last minute. Only they were the last witnesses of his death. The Virgin Mary stands to the right of Christ and Apostle John to the left. Mary Magdalene stooped her head in an agony of despair. The figures are depicted on the mountain landscape background on the Golgotha where Christ was executed. The figures of Basil the Great, Gregory the Dialogist and Nicholas the Miracle Maker are pictured on the sides of composition. On the northern wall there is a composition The Transference of Christ's Body. The last service to him was accomplished by the Galilean women and two cryptic disciples. Pontius Pilatus, the procurator of Judea, allowed Joseph of Arimathea to take Christ's body off. He brought the linen sheet. Along with Nicodemus, who brought myrrh and aloe, they took him off the cross and wrapped a cloth around him. The Virgin Mary stands aside, both with her fellow travelers. Her hands are squeezed in an agony beyond words. On the sides of composition, one can see figures of the hierarchs, St. John Chrysostom, Gregory the Theologian and Apostle Jacob. The church compositions are unified by ornamental painting. They are created by Moscow artist Lakov. Multicolored decorative composition consists of chestnut tree flowers, grapes, palm leaves, the same depiction is on the arch. On the slopes of the building there are rosettes that look like sunflowers. The iconostasis opens the chancel concave of the church. Its low tier is made of an Italian marble, but the upper part of it is made of metal decorated with vine. The top metal part of iconostasis and holy gate were fulfilled by the goldsmith and silversmith master Rindin. Thirty icons of the iconostasis were painted by artists Popov and Ivanov. Among them, in the holiday row, one can see the exaltation of the cross, the nativity of the Most Holy Mother of God, the presentation of the Holy Virgin Mary to the Temple, the Transfiguration, the Last Supper, the Resurrection, Christ's Baptism, the Candlemas Day, the Feast of the Purification, the Nativity of the Savior. 
In the icon stand over the Ascension there is entrance to Jerusalem. In the medallion over the Last Supper there is the Holy Trinity of the Old Testament. In the second tier, on both sides of the Holy Gate, there are the icons of the Most Holy Mother of God and Jesus Christ. Next to the icon of the Savior, there is the temple icon of Saints Antony and Theodosius. The icons of the Dormition of the Holy Virgin and Saints Cyril and Methodius are on the left side of the iconostasis. The top part of the iconostasis is made of metal, and icons were painted by modern artists. A silver bronze chandelier, 1,200 kilos of weight, decorates the interior of the church. In the refectory church, the icon of Saint Apostle Andrew the First called, with a part of his holy relics, is preserved. The icon was painted in the 90s of the 20th century. The memorial day of the Saint Andrew the First called is on the 13th of December. The icon of the Domitian of the Most Holy Mother of God is also preserved here in the church, a sample of the ancient icon painting. There were numerous burial places outside the church, but not all of them were preserved. At the present time one can see the grave of the general judge of the Zaporozhian army, Vasil Kochubey, and the Poltava colonel Ivan Iskra. Another two tombs are of the Don Cossack army kennels at Lorov and Krasnoshchokov. Next to their burial places is the tombstone of the Prime Minister of the Tsar government, Totr Stolipin, buried in 1911. In 1941, the refectory church and refectory chamber were damaged of an explosion of the Domitian Cathedral. The repair restorational works on the facades were completed in 1956, and later on the interior of the refectory was restored. From 1960 to 1980 there was a museum of atheism. Now the divine services are held in the church.